Welcome to this first session on VEX VR. This is challenge number one. What you are going to be doing today is you are going to be learning how to write a program so the robot can navigate around the disk maze. Now, if you don't know how to access VEX VR, just click on this link here and it will then open up this window. Now, once you're inside this window, there are a couple of different things here. So, number one, you have your playground and this is going to open up the virtual playground for your robot. Now, if it doesn't open up the disk maze automatically, you'll need to scroll down from grid map and select on disk maze. Now, a couple of different buttons in here. If you want to make this window bigger, select on expand and then to shrink it again. And if you want to hide it whilst you're doing your coding, you can just select on hide and then show again. Now, what you'll be able to see at the top here are the different sensors on your robot. So let's have a look at your robot. Let's select on this camera here. And then if you drag your mouse around like this, if you use your cursor to zoom in and out, what you're going to be able to see are the different sensors here. So number one, we can track the heading. So what heading is it facing? If I select and grab a turn right block, heading is going to turn to 90. Rotation will also turn to 90. So this is useful if you're trying to identify the orientation of your robot. The next thing which we have here is the front eye and the down eye. So if again you go around to the front of the robot, you're going to have an eye on the front of the robot. This is going to be able to identify different colors and also is going to be able to identify different objects. Now, as well as this here, this front eye can also detect distance as well. So if I change the camera view of my playground again, if I just get it to drive forward, the robot's going to crash, but don't worry too much. What we're going to be able to see here is that the front eye is detecting object as true and the color is green. And if you notice here, the distance is now seven millimeters. So the front eye is seven millimeters away from the object. If you restart this, you'll be able to see that the default distance when the robot's starting on the green square is 820 millimeters. Now, the other sensors you have is you have the down eye. So the down eye is here on your robot. It can detect color and also object again. So if your robot is trying to pick up an object using the magnet, this is particularly useful. When I say magnet, and if I go across to the other playground here, we have got a disc, I think it's the move playground. And what we need to do inside the disc mover playground is pick up these objects. And this is where the down eye object false and true would be useful because this is what you can use to identify if it is driven over an object. Now going back onto disc maze again, so we can finish looking at our sensors here. So we've also got location. So this is particularly useful. So when you look at this coordinate, this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. When we're starting here on the grid, you'll be able to see this is X. If we press on play, the X remains the same, but the Y coordinate is changing. And this is really useful if you want to get your robot to go to a particular location on the grid using the location sensor position X and Y. Lastly, we've got the location angle. So again, I'm going to delete this block. And if we get a turn right block, and if we turn, you're going to be able to see that the location angle has changed from zero to 50. And the last one for you here, on the front of your robot, you have got two bumper sensors. So if we hit one of these bumper sensors, or if it crashes, so let's make it crash. We're going to do turn left and turn right, uh, sorry, turn left and then drive forward. What you'll be able to see here is that these are going to be changed to true once the robot is crashing. Now, let's get started with today's challenge. What we need to be able to do is we need to get the robot to navigate to all of the different aspects or all of the different disks inside uh, this playground here. So we've got green, we've got blue, we've got red. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an autonomous program. So we are going to use a loop to do this. And I'm going to start with a while loop. 
So I'm going to say while the robot eye, so we're going to use the front eye for today's video. We're going to say while the front eye uh, cannot detect green, we would like it to go forward. So while not, and we're going to go into our sensors here, front eye detects green, we would like it to go forward. If it sees green, we would like the robot to stop. We would like it to wait for one second. And then we would like the robot to take a right. Now, let's see if this logic is working. So, let's go forward. Does the robot stop? And then take a right. And the answer is yes here. So this is an example of one loop we can use. We've used our operator not and our first sensor. We want the robot to go to blue, to blue, to blue, to blue, then to green. And we need to identify the orientation of these turns here. So this is going to be forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left. So what we can do here is we can use a loop. Now I'm going to use the same loop structure as before. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say while not detect blue. We want it to drive forward. If it sees blue, we want it to stop driving and turn left. There are four blue disks. Therefore, this action or this set of instructions needs to be repeated four times. So going over to control, we can find our loops, repeat, forever, we have got repeat until, and we've got while. If I put a repeat loop around this while block here, and if we say repeat for, let's see if this allows the robot to go and visit these four different disks. Now, it's pretty slow at the moment, okay? So we want to speed it up. So in order to speed it up, and whilst it is doing this, what we can do is we can use something which is called velocity. Velocity means speed. Now, what we can see here is our robot has just stopped, so we know that this is working. At the beginning of our program, we're going to get it to go faster. And we're going to put this up here, and this up there. We're going to set these to 100. And now we're going to see if it can complete this faster. So it doesn't take as much time. Do keep an eye on the census. Now, your challenge for today is to finish writing this program. We want the robot to visit all of these disks here. If you do not have access to the Google Docs file with the challenge information, do obviously comment underneath this video or do ask your teacher. And if you're not shooting at St. Andrews, as I said, drop a message underneath this video here. And the last thing I have to explain to you in this video is how to save your work. So, in order to save your work, click up, click up here where it says Vexco Project, and we're going to call this Challenge 1. In order to download this, you're going to need to save it to your computer. And it's then going to download locally on your computer. This works for both iPads, this works for Chromebooks, for Windows, for Mac, it works on all devices. And just before I finish today, in the next video we're going to be exploring sensors and variables. Hopefully this is nice and clear. Do let your teacher know if you have any questions, or as I said, drop a message underneath this video.